three, two, one, zero. All engines. Whether you've been married one or 20 plus years, at some point, you realize you were married into crazy. And that's what our podcast is all about. We offer love, laughter, and a dose of reality as we unpack this crazy thing called marriage. So sit back, relax, and get your ear hustle on. It's time to start the conversation. All right, let's go. Welcome to episode 173 of the Married Into Crazy podcast with Snooks and Lovey. I'm Lovey. I am Snooks. And she's over here breaking her microphone. <laughs> I saw that in the very beginning. It was twirling. It was a baton. Oh, seriously. No. And we want to welcome each and every one of you back to the podcast. And um, this might be a little bit of a shorter podcast. Um, but first off, you know, we're post Christmas just by a few days. And so we hope everyone had a great holiday season, um, that you got everything that you had hoped for, but more importantly, that you were with friends and family and um, got to share love and, and have some great moments. Yeah, um, just everyone stayed safe. You know, that's always key, top priority. And like Lovey said, just got to share with family and friends and just um, enjoying each other. So. Well, we did. Um, we got together on Christmas Eve um, mm -hmm. over at my dad's, which was a, um, in hindsight, it was an amazing evening. There were some challenges, but um, my sister flew in from Denver with her husband and children. And uh, we were able to get all my siblings um, under the roof with dad, with, um, with all but one of the grandchildren. Yeah. And we were able to really spend some time on show dad that he was loved. And um, we got to see a lot of his uh, generational growth, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, it, it was a good time. You know, we, it's funny because it's so, it's more quiet at dad's, you know, obviously with lovey side of the family because we're so much bigger, but it was just as much quality. We laughed and, you know, we joked around and just shared some stories. Um, I talked with my sisters, my lovey's two sisters, and they were just, we were dying laughing about like some of the things that <laughs> happened in the beginning of our relationship and some stuff. My sister wanted to fight Rana. <laughs> she was like, I didn't do that. Did I act like that? No, I didn't. Oh my God, sis, what? And the younger sister, she was just like, what? I did not know about any of that, you know? And I just started, I was telling them some of the things that happened, that transpired, and that was like, nah, you can remember everything. I'm like, yep, I sure do. <laughs> yeah, she does. I'll be the first one to, to <laughs> amen to that. Whatever. But it was, it was uh it was a good time. We had a we had a really good time. And then on actual Christmas Day, we had dinner with my family at my house. So I just have to share this right quick. We tried like an experiment, I should say. Mm. Um, everyone is, I'm going to say everyone, but one of my uncles, he has uh, he's, has cancer. And we were like, okay, we're going to eat healthier. We're going to do a healthier type of Christmas. And I would just say that I was not a fan of the healthy Christmas food. Really? I did not care for it. I mean, of course I ate it. And we did have we had some turkey. We had some ham um some dressing and there was some mac and cheese too but we had a whole plethora of vegetables which is good but my daughters were upset because I did not make my mac and cheese and then the Kiana was like we're green beans because my aunt we call her, her famous green beans she makes them and she didn't make them this time and she was just like Kiki was somebody like, brought some cauliflower or something or another actually yeah, good? no, Tai Chai said it was, yeah, it was like a cauliflower type of mac and cheese instead, you know, the cauliflower instead of the noodles. And it was actually good, but I'm like, bro, this ain't healthy. All this cheese oh, and all that right. uh, dairy stuff mixed in. Yeah, it wasn't noodles and it was cauliflower in its place, but okay, so maybe it was just healthy -er by it was like, oh, a smidgen. Okay. I want some tea. I, I'm going to start drinking tea. 
with honey and whiskey and so I don't use white sugar. Right. I'm like, oh, that's not healthy. I'm like, yeah. oh, but it's tea. But it was it was, you know, I ain't mad at her. It was actually good. So uh, well, and then I had to go back and forth because my dad had um some challenges on Christmas Day, mm. um, health wise. And then so I went over to see him and then um I'm, so I was going back and forth. I will say this, you guys, if you can hear my voice and if if you're a fan of black history, you need to go buy this game. Black called, Wall Street. Called Black Wall Street. You can get it at playblackwallstreet.com. If it sounds familiar to you, it's because you all got a chance to meet uh, Devon and Sinclair uh, Walker. And these are individuals that, um, they're the creators of the game. Um, Devon actually created the game. And it was featured in Essence Magazine, I think it was last month as one of the top eight games to purchase for your family. Let me just say this, not only is it fun, it will make you wanna punch the people you love as they are uh, bankrupting you or buying up properties that used to belong to you, or in the case of our cousin Vernon, uh, possibly <laughs> commingling his money <laughs> with the bank's money when nobody was paying attention because we were drinking too much. <laughs> We had fun. Let me, I, I just really need to cut in on this. So um, as you know, I, I'm in school. So I was like, okay, I need to sit down once everyone kind of left. I sat down and I started doing my, my homework and Lovey, Vernon, Bianca and Chaz were playing the game. And once you lose your money, you're out. So B was out pretty quick. Yeah, her husband bankrupted her. Oh my gosh. So but, you know, it was so funny because they were talking, going back and forth. She's like, oh, yeah, I forget. You cheat. And he's like, what are you talking about? I don't cheat. And Chaz was saying, yeah, you do. And she's like, Ch -ch 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 Chaz, you cheat too. So anyway, they started playing this game at 10-ish, 10-ish or so. It was 2 in the morning, and they had to just say, call a truce or whatever. We're going to pick back up where we left off at. When I say four hours of them fussing, yelling, accusing, whatever. <laughs> it was bananas. I'm work. I'm, I'm literally doing my homework in the other room, but I'm laughing because they are really going in on each other. Like for real going in. This game is so much fun. It's fun. You guys. It's so it's much fun. fun. Mm -hmm. But half of that, half of what you heard was because we caught Vernon every now and then. <laughs> like he was supposed to pay because he landed on some of our properties. And he started pulling money from the bank. We're like, whoa, whoa, hold on, player. Since when does the bank cover your, your debt? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Oh, wait, my bad, my bad. Jazz and I look at you like, how long has this fool been put, pulling money out the bank? No wonder he's got so much money. I mean, I, we don't know what's going on. So we start looking at all his properties kind of suspect. That is so funny. Uh, we had a good time. But look, check it out. Get that game, playblackwallstreet.com. You will not regret it. It is a lot of fun. And it also teaches financial literacy. Mm -hmm. There's some additional things in the back of the booklet that teach you how to build a, um, a balance sheet and start to recognize assets, liabilities. There's some vocabulary. There's a lot of different things where in the process of playing this game, you can your surf, yourself learn about uh, financial literacy or you know, start to teach your kids um, some things. So it, it is a lot of fun. It's a lot of well, fun. Well, you also learn... Um about some of the businesses and a, a lot about the history um, right. in Oklahoma and everything. So it, it's, it's educational and it's fun. So what could be, what could be worse? What could be better? Right. It was, it's, it's a wicked fun game mm -hmm. because um, anyway, for all the things that we talked about, and then you also learn more about the difference between owning a sole proprietorship versus an LLC, LLC. versus mm -hmm. a corporation, because mm -hmm. you have the opportunity to turn your your sole proprietorship, the, the property you buy into an LLC, then you can actually buy up, you know, like items and build a corporation and then people have to pay you more. And it's, it's, it's awesome. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, the unfortunate news is that um, in going through this holiday season, I don't know what it is about Christmas time. Um, there's always some form of tragedy. It seems that's around this time period. And um, it's unfortunately, I lost my father yesterday. Um, which was the 27th of uh, December. And we're doing this podcast the day after. And, you know, I've joked about my dad over the course of, you know, however long we've been doing the podcast. 
Um, I would always say stuff like, oh, if there's anybody that's not qualified to give me marriage advice, it's my father because he's been married four times. But realistically, um, I mean, and it was always in jest. And I would joke with dad about that. I'm like, hey, don't try and give me no marriage advice, Mr. <laughs> I'm on number four wife. <laughs> All right. But the, the beauty of it is that dad would take it in stride and um, he'd accept the humor. Um, but with my dad passing, um, he had a condition called pul pulmonary sarcoidosis. Um, blessed guy, because when he was younger in the military, he was diagnosed with it. And then it went dormant. And all the cases that I've read about, because I've been trying to learn more and more about this over the last several years, all the cases, once it begins, it continues its progression. And it's very rare for you to find any literature about sarcoidosis going dormant um, or not progressing. And it did that for all, what, almost 30, 40 years in dad. Like he was on him when he was in his 20s and just practically disappeared. He was able to live an amazing life and um, it came back when he was in his 60s. And then he, so he was able to really live a full life. Um, he did just about everything he wanted to. But I, I bring him up because um, it's a tragedy within the family because we went from four generations. Now there's only three generations of us. And my, um, I, I wanted to offer some fatherly advice because um, there's some things that, it's not just what my dad said, it's some of the things that my dad did that I would offer up that I believe make a difference. And, and the, first and foremost, the thing that comes to my mind that my father did um, in the form of fatherly advice that benefited our marriage was that before we ever got married, um, my dad basically stood by Rana's side because he saw that she was the one for me. And my dad offered some advice where it was basically, it's the, it's the two of you. It was my dad telling me to cleave to my wife and that when I walk down the aisle and make her mine and I become hers, that that's our universe and it all begins there. And he said, nothing else matters outside of the two of you. He said, you two come before your children for each other. You two set the basis for which they're gonna be able to live their lives and they're gonna look to you, so you have to be strong. And that means that doesn't matter what your mom says, doesn't matter what I say, doesn't matter what you know um, your children say or the aunties or the uncles, you two form your, your life, your family unit, and you protect it against everything outside of it. And he said, including me. And that's exactly how he lived his life. And I think it's pretty cool that he set the foundation that helped us, quite honestly, probably get through some of the things. As a matter of fact, do you remember when we were in the process of you know, contemplating getting divorced? Part of our process of relearning each other and getting in the, the space, we identified my dad's house as yeah, a safe zone. It was, it was neutral and safe um, because actually where we, we both worked in equal distance um, from dad's house, he, but in, in opposite directions. So when we, like Lubby said, when we were going through the process of um, rebuilding and getting um, deciding that we needed to spend more time, face more face-to-face -face time in neutral safe zone. Dad offered up his house. Um, dad and and, and mom and dad, Sanja. Um, Mama Sanja um, offered up their their house, and we would go in the backyard, and we would sit there, and we'd have lunch, and we would talk. And sometimes we didn't really even talk a lot. We just kind of it was just being present being there with each other and we you know obviously we're getting ready to celebrate 25 years yeah come up on 25 quick next week yeah next week next tuesday as a matter of fact yeah. but you know um it, it, it's funny because like like you said not funny but like you said dad was there he stood by my side prior to us getting married um, he stood by, I felt like he had my back, yeah. you know, um, the entire time that we were married, lovey made a joke one day, <laughs> we were going to Vegas and he goes, yeah, I'm, I'm a, I'm, we're going to Vegas and I'm a, I'm a trade her in 
or somebody else. And I knew he was laughing, joking around and I'm sure dad did too, but dad was like, no, you ain't, you know, like he, he, he let it be known that I, I am here. I am his daughter and um, I ain't going nowhere, you know. Remember that time dad, I, you said something or Kayla said something. Oh my gosh. Funniest story ever. So um, I was over to the house. Kaylin, Kaylin and I was, was over to the house and I, Kaylin must've been, he couldn't be older than three. So we were there and we were eating. Um, I was at the counter fixing my plate or whatever. And Caitlin's sitting in the chair and he said something, something, whatever. And he's like, yeah, cause my daddy hit my mom. And I just looked at him and I didn't trip cause Lovey and I used to wrestle a lot. <laughs> you know, we throw pillows and we, we act like we were little teenagers running through the house, chasing each other, whatever. So Caitlin said, my dad hit my mom and I didn't, like I said, I looked at him and I just kept on making my plate or whatever. Next thing I know, dad is standing in front of me with his hands in his pocket. And I swear he was jingling some change with his hands in his pocket. And so I said, I just looked up at him and he said, uh, he said, Ernest Jr. hit you. And I was like, huh? It was totally out of the blue, right? And he looked at me and he said, I said, did Ernest Jr. hit you? And I found my face up and I looked, I was like, uh, no. I'm like, come on, dad, you should know by now. You know, if you don't know me, you know him, you know? And so after I said no, he stood there. It was at least 10 seconds just looking at me. I don't know if he was trying to see if I was gonna crack or if I was gonna move my eyes. Like, you know, I'm not telling the truth. I was like, okay, that was weird, whatever. But then I looked over at Kaylin and then it, it made sense. It connected. So maybe an hour or so later, Ernest uh, Levy shows up and dad goes, opens the door and I'm sitting at the counter where dad said something to me and I could see the front door. So dad opens the door, but he didn't let Ernest in the house. <laughs> he didn't let Ernest in the house. He, he must have said something because, well, obviously he did, but the look on Levy's face, because I could see Levy's face from where I'm sitting, Lovey's frowned his face up like, what? And then he looked he looked around dad and looked at me. I just shrugged my shoulders. I was like, I don't know. And so I don't know what their conversation was, but um, yeah, dad- Oh, I'll tell you what Lovie the conversation in. was. Dad was like, or Junior, you put hands on her? I was like, wait, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? Kaylin said, I'm like, who? Kaylin? <laughs> I'm like, the baby? I mean, come on, dad. I mean, and daddy's like, well, she said you did it. Or he's like, because you know that's not right. And I'm like, dad, I have never gone there. <laughs> Mind you, he still hadn't let him in the house yet. <laughs> sure didn't. Sure didn't, protecting her. You know, that that's that's one of the things that my dad lived. I mean, say what you will. Yes, he was married four times. Um, the interesting thing, though, is that three out of four of my dad's ex-wives all became friends and hung out together. The first and the fourth, my, my mother was the first and Sanja's dad's fourth and, and the one he's been married to the longest. Um, oh yeah, cause it's been um, 21 years. Yeah, I think dad was married to her longer than he's, all the others put together. combined. <laughs> put together. And, uh, but what was funny was that my mother and dad's fourth wife became the closest of friends. And first and the last. First and the last, the Alpha and the Omega. First, my last, my everything. And they hung tight. And um, mom, Sanja, stood in the gap when you know, my mom passed and she was crying. And Vivian and I would talk all the time. And I, you know, and you need anything whatsoever. And, and my mom loved her and she loved my mom. And the cool thing is I saw my, my brother-in-law, Derek, and I were outside, or my, my stepbrother, Derek, he and I were outside talking today. We both went to go check in on mom. And um, he was like, man, I don't understand that. Talking about my dad. And he goes, because we, we, here's the thing. In our family, everybody calls each other dad, mom, sis, bro. I only use the terms just now, stepbrother, whatever, just to kind of give you an illustration 
so you know who I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. um, but we don't claim that. We don't claim steps. We don't claim halves. We, we're just family. And he was like, you know, it's a funny thing about dad. Dad would, you know, it's, I'm trying to figure out how did, how did you get along with all your exes? And then your exes get along with each other. And then all the kids, you know, the, the adopted kids, because there there's a few that weren't their biological kids, but ended up being adopted in. And dad loved them all the same. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's crazy, but you, you can honestly tell that he loved Derek as much as he loved me, as much as he loved Lynette, as much as he loved Leslie, as much as he loved, you know, Ebony. And that's another lesson, you know, when, from the fatherly advice standpoint, if you get to a point where you're in a blended family, um, it's no longer my kids, her kids, my kids, his kids. Blended family is, is blended. That means it's, if you think about it, when you blend it up, we had a, a series on this a long time ago um, with my sisters and blended is blended. That means it's, it all becomes one. It's all mixed together. Mm -hmm. And there should be no distinction where one begins and the other one ends. And my, our father lived that just through and through. There was no in-laws. There was no, it's just sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. That's true. And he, and like Lovey said, he was just there when you talk to him or whatever. He was a man of few words though. You know, <laughs> dad wouldn't say a whole, whole lot, but he said what was on his mind. I remember one time when we lived in, um, before we moved here, <laughs> dad came over to the house and I was in the kitchen. I was cleaning up. And I said, he said something about, yeah, uh, cabin stuff somewhere or whatever. And I was like, yeah, well, if your son would help, he's like, oh, he don't help. Well, he, it ain't just your job. I was like, I know that, you know, and he just kind of started he going always in trouble saying I'm beating you, <laughs> not cleaning up. <laughs> no, cause I was just, I was irritated. I think Kiki was sick that, that day too, but I said, yeah, if your son would help, he's like, oh, he don't help. Well, he should help. It, uh, it's not just your job. I said, I know. But it was like he said what he was going to say. I said what I said, and that's all I'm saying, you know. Yeah, he was good for that. Yeah, yeah. But he was um, always very kind, always very loving to me, you know. We would just have few words. Sometimes we, I think the longest conversation I ever had with dad was when he was over here. And he was, I don't know what we were watching, but, and we just sat and we kind of talked through the whole show. And it was just about, I don't know, little stuff or whatever. And I was like, you, that's like, you feel me? I was like, <laughs> yeah, dad, I feel you, you know. One of my favorite pictures uh, is dad was sitting on our couch playing with Josh, playing with our nephew. Oh, yeah. It was little and Josh was trying to teach him how to play on one of his little computer tablets. <laughs> and uh, it was the funniest thing because dad was just leaning over like, I have no idea what you're doing. Yeah, exactly. But he was in there. He was playing with his 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 grandson so that was kind of cool you know all this stuff about dad just it, it's culminated in his relationship with with mom um, with Sanja and dad was very sick and he was going through he knew it was a terminal illness it was there was no recovery from this um, but he would take the time and, and you said a man of a few words. This is also a man at this point in his life before passing, that he was also a man of very little breath because of the disease state. So he really tried to really reserve what he said, how he said it, how long he talked, um, because he only had so much before it would gas him and he would have to try to get his oxygen levels back up again. And it didn't stop him from picking up the phone and saying, Ernst Jr., don't forget, mom's birthday is, he loved him some sages. So he wanted to make sure oh that even in his gosh. ailment, that his bride was taken care of, that his bride was not forgotten, oh my that gosh. his bride was included. It was, and- Every year, like clockwork. So her birthday is five days before mine. We know this, everyone knows, we're both Aries. But dad would call April 3rd and say, uh, I'm just calling to remind you. I said, dad, we already know. Well, I'm just reminding you. I said, okay, we don't need you to remind us. We know every year, every year, 
oh, did I say every year? Every, every year. year. Dad, we're not going to forget. The week prior in the morning of. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> did you call? Yes, Dad, we called. Okay, I just want to make sure that you, I said, Dad, and he was just kind of, finally, he just, because I said Dad like five times, Dad, and he just kind of laughed, okay, 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 thank you. <laughs> Dad was about inclusion. Yeah. He was, he was fully about inclusion. He was like, don't forget my wife, don't forget each other, love on each other, you know, um, always be included, mm -hmm. and, and I, that's a lesson, that's part of the fatherly advice, where it's like, you know, dad showed me that once he truly settled down it was like nothing came before his wife and he wanted to make sure that she was treated with the the respect that she he deserved. believed that she deserved mm -hmm. that was his queen and he said you know you don't do come in and do for the king and not for the queen and nobody ever did that but he was pretty assertive in making sure that no one ever forgot no one ever um put her a step behind him that she was on equal playing field well, I, I think too, I mean, it's, it's, you know, we, we talk about, like you said, we don't do the step in, in law or whatever. And unfortunately, a lot of times when you put the, um, the step parent or the mother-in-law or whatever, whenever you, you give it, you give it a name, anything other than mom or mother, you know, it, it's like, um, that means they're not as prevalent as mm, good point. The, the 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 first one you know because the first one is just mom and then every, all others after that adopted mom foster mom you know what i'm saying right. so it's like they don't hold as much meaning as mom so I, I maybe he was thinking of it like that because at this point we had all still had our mothers you know um except for your mom passing but you know Lynette and Shell or whatever, and everyone had had their mothers, but he was just like, hey, 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 she's a mom too. All right. She's my wife. That means, you know, you call me dad, you call her mom. And I remember when um, I first, not when I first, but right before, it was right before we were getting married, I was over there again. Dang, I spent a lot of time over there. I was <laughs> over there, <laughs> I was over there again without lovey. And I said, okay, I don't have your number because I dropped Kaylin off. I don't know why, but, and I went to my mom's house and I was like, okay, well, I don't have your phone number. He was like, okay, well, write it down. So I go to write his number down, the, the house number, and he's standing there and he's watching me. And so I didn't know what to put down. Like, what do I say? Who he is or whatever, like his name or, you know. And so I just put Ernest's dad and he gave me his number. He was laughing. He goes, yeah, I was trying to wait and see what you was going to say, what you was, what you was going to put down. And I started, I just kind of laughed too. Like, oh, I didn't know what to, what to say or whatever. He said, no, you call me pops. I was like, okay, no, actually he didn't tell me that right then. When I came back, he was like, no, you call me pops. I said, okay, I'll call you pops. So um, after we got married, I don't know if you remember this, but we went to Vegas. I know you remember that part, but we called everybody, let everybody know that we were there. We talked to dad. You remember talking to dad mm -hmm. that day? So we talked to dad the night that we got to Vegas and dad was feeling good. <laughs> dad was like, hey, babe. I said, hey, dad. Uh, uh, we Yeah, we made it, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, Ernest Jr. told me y'all made it, blah, blah, blah. The hotel, yada, yada. I said, yeah, it's a lot of people. He said, okay, so hey, I don't want you to call me pops. I said, oh, okay. He said, you call me dad. And I was like, oh, okay. He said, yep, you call me dad. I was like, dad, it is. And from that day, you know, I've been calling, he's, he's just been dad. And it didn't feel funny either. Sometimes some people may feel weird about calling somebody else, you know, uh, mom or dad or whatever. It never felt funny. It never felt wrong. It just always felt right. So as he said, you call me dad. I was like, okay, dad, it is. And I didn't bat my eyes and not didn't have a problem with it you know i'm not the the most oh which what you want me to call you kind of you know let you in the inner circle inner realm kind of person i guess but with him it was it was just different so it's funny my dad um it's my hero in many respects many respects and uh i let a few i haven't put anything on social media yet and i i i got until mom was going to wait 
So she said it was okay. And so I'm going to probably post something tonight, but I did let my closest friends I grew up with that have known my dad for 30 plus years. As long as they know you. As long as we've been friends, they've known my dad. And um, to a person, they all had like a memory or something <laughs> of, you know, some interaction with dad that, you know, and there was like a level of respect, you know, they've always had. And my dad would always ask about my, my three best friends. He'd always ask, always, you know, how's Terry, how's Steve, yeah, how's Raj? Steve, yeah. And, um, and he would ask about Anthony, you know, Salgado. And um, those are the four closest people I had growing up. And it was, uh, it was family. And so, and they were, and it was heartfelt when they reached out to let me know, and to share their condolences, all that. But anyway, I'm not trying to make this melancholy, but I wanted to do something to dedicate this to uh, my father, Ernest Lee Kaysen Sr. Um, and offer some of the fatherly advice that he offered that he shared, but more than that, that he exemplified. And um, I, I wish that for all of you as well, that if you don't have a, a, a father or a man in your life that's gonna give you some clues, some breadcrumbs on how to be a better husband, um, that doesn't excuse you from being a better husband. That means that you become the example that you will eventually be able to teach your daughter or teach your husband or your husband, your son to be a better husband. Um, teach your daughter what to expect, raise their expectations. Um, a lot of things we take for granted what our parents offer us. And then we wish that we would have done more. And I, I can honestly say that um, hmm, the last time I saw my father alive was on Christmas Day, 2021. And Kissed him, said, I love you. He said, he loved me. And he was lying in his bed, peaceful. So that was the last time I saw him. On the 26th, he was resting. And on the 27th, he passed. So spend the time that you can with those fatherly figures. Don't take their advice and throw it out. Weigh it. On the scale, you know, there's something that you can apply in your life. And don't just share the information, try and live it. Yeah, um, but not not just about fatherly, just about even even from the aspect of have being a spouse, you know, um once they're gone, they're gone. You can't take it back, you can't do it over. And you have to really think about at that moment, is this really that important? Whatever I'm mad about, or is it really, you know, how is this gonna add another day to my life or whatever to from the pick up his socks or or you know what I'm saying? Just the little things that sometimes we get so upset about or so overwhelmed over when at the end of the day it's about the two of you, not about the stuff on the floor. I'm not saying go be a slob, but make sure that you're as much effort that you're putting into fussing, you're putting more effort into loving. Yeah, more effort into loving. And I also want to give a shout out to Sanja Marie Kaysen, uh, the woman that was the love of my father's life and the woman that truly honored for better, for worse, for sickness and health and poor, all that, till death do we part. She was there at the very end. Yeah, she took care of dad. Yeah, she did. So love each other and be inclusive. Put each other first. And uh, I hope that we all have the opportunity to love our spouses like my father and his wife love each other. So with that said, until the next time, be blessed. Bye-bye.